My name is Elon Maurer. I'm the CEO and founder of Quill. I would like to spend the next 20 minutes discussing the evolution of transparent video caching. It's quite complementary to the panel that has taken place like an hour ago. We have founded Quilt about two years ago, realizing that video is going to be the primary traffic flowing in the internet and practically facilitating a transition from linear TV to online video consumption for the next decade. I think that we realize that the concept of transparent caching is a very valid one, but that the technology and the product cannot meet the carrier's requirement definitely in the US, Europe, Korea, and Japan to scale effectively at the subscriber edge. I think that today there is a realization across the board that transparent caching is going to play a key ingredient in evolving today's network and meeting the demand for online video. I'm just getting back from a visit in Japan and Korea and I must say that it's quite amazing that by meeting top executives at the largest carriers over there, you get to sense the same dilemmas that you sense in the US, in the UK, and the rest of Europe, and they all get to the same realization that CDN may not be an enough uh, tool or good enough tool to solve the problem, and a combination between CDN and transparent caching is required in order to evolve the internet and meet their challenges today with online video. I think that as the leaders of this industry, I guess that many of them are sitting in this room today, we have the responsibility to develop the market and educate it and get to a win-win situation for the best of the consumers, the carriers, the CDN, and the content providers, even before we are focusing on the differences between the technologies. I would like to focus today mostly on the ingredients of this evolution and the important parts of a next generation transparent casting solution that can be a win-win for all. If we look into the way that video delivery is being achieved today, we see that it's very much ineffective. Practically, the CDNs can bring the content only to the inter-exchanges or maximum to the core network, but then you have to transmit each and every title across the carrier network. And this is not scalable definitely if you realize that already today video is accounting for 60% of the traffic in the US. It's expected to get to 90 or even more, and we are only talking today about few minutes and not few hours like on the linear TV. And there is a better economic solution, and when I'm saying economic, we have, as part of our solution, an application that is called Video Analytics. We have more than 10 deployments today in the US, Europe, and Japan. And you see a very clear Pareto pattern across all those deployments, indicating that in any one of them, less than 20% of the video titles are responsible for more than 80% of the bits. And if we are able to evolve network to be intelligent enough to analyze all the traffic in real time and store the popular content at the edge of the network, we are able to get to a situation that online video will scale at a much more economic cost for the benefit of all. And this is the solution that Quilt has developed. And you may see here that we are pushing the technology to the subscriber edge, which is another topic that has been raised during the panel itself. And we support it by the design of our product extremely. It's important to realize that putting the technology at the subscriber edge is not only about OPEX reduction and reducing the prices of transit, but mostly, and this is mostly true for the biggest carriers in the US, Europe, Japan, it's mostly about reducing their capex spending on the aggregation and core network once video is growing exponentially. I would now like to touch on the key ingredients that would make this kind of technology more scalable and 
allow us to develop a significant market over the coming years. I think that the first one is that we need to have a unified solution. By unified, we mean that we have to bring <coughs> customers one single product that can integrate all the necessary functions for doing transparent video caching in a single product. And that means the networking functions, the storage functions, and the video delivery functions. And you'd like to have one solution that can analyze all the traffic in real time without any uh, reconfiguration of the network or integration with any third party load balancer, DPI, or doing PBRs. You'd like to, of course, analyze and find all those popular content and uh, titles in real time, store them on the same device, and deliver them from the same device, like putting a plug and play uh, product into your network and solving your problem. In most of the cases today, the other vendors require the carriers to do integration between the network, the caching, and the storage. And eventually, this reduces or increases the complexity of the projects and reduces their probability to scale definitely to the edge of the network. The other ingredient, and I think that there was a question to the panel, what are the efficiencies of caching that we are seeing across the board depending on population sizes and insertion points? Quilt realized that without giving customers the visibility ahead of any networking change, ahead of any trial, it's very difficult to convince them that there are efficiencies for transparent caching. We have developed a video analytics product that can be deployed in a non-intrusive manner, just on an optical splitter in a carrier network, and practically simulate the caching results even before you start any trial. What you see in this slide is uh, data, real-time data, from one of our deployments in a MSO in the United States. You see that in this network, the orange portion of the graph represents the video portion. It's about 8 gigabit per second from a deployment that carries like 13 gigabit per second on a single device to 10 gigabit per second links. And the blue portion of the graph represents the potential caching savings in that specific location. And all this data is calculated in real time in a web-based application that can be monitored and stored more than one year of data. And you also have the breakdown across all sites, and you see that Netflix is the most significant site, of course, in the United States. We are projecting like 60% of cacheability for Netflix. And as Ellen from PeerUp mentioned, uh, the cacheability for YouTube is even higher, or I think it was Gilad, it's about 75%. And we see very consistent results across different reason, uh, regions. And I think that this is a key enabler for carriers to move on and once they are doing the deployment itself, they are able to use the same tool in order to see the actual savings and plan the policies and stuff like this. The other aspect is that for transparent caching to be really effective, and we've touched on that point, we have to deploy it at the subscriber edge. Deploying at the subscriber edge would bring the best savings and will allow us to save on core and aggregation cap expanding. However, the space at the subscriber edge is at premium. And it was mentioned that you cannot deploy different boxes, the green, blue, and yellow boxes for the different functions. More than that, you need to deploy something that is very small in footprint and can incorporate all the function in a unified manner at the same time. Since this is a relatively infant market, we still do not have the metrics to benchmark solutions. And we were thinking that if space is at premium, we should practically take a look at solution and instead of claiming that the cache can do 10 gigabit per second, let's see what are all the ingredients that are required in your network in order to deploy the solution, meaning the networking pieces, the storage pieces, and the caching engine themselves. Calculate the rec space see what is your throughput for traffic processing and video delivery, 
and then you have a normalized figure that the carrier can compare between different vendors and different solutions. I think that without this metric, uh, the, there is a lot of confusion. And what we have seen once we did this measurement for a 20 gigabit per second deployment of traffic processing, supporting up to five gigabit per second of video delivery that Quilt is able to offer using a unified solution at least five times better performance or less footprint than any other solution that is available in the market today. And I think that the evolution of the technology using, it's part of it, it's patents, part of it, it's clever engineering as Facebook like to call it, will allow this technology to scale and serve customers at the subscriber edge. Uh, transparency is another topic that is important to realize and it's also key in order to make sure that all the parties in the ecosystem are happy with the end result. There is difference between uh, operational transparency, meaning that you do not have to change anything on the end user side, on the carrier network side and the content uh, provider side, but in addition to that, we do not expect to hide the fact that transparent caching is working in the network. And I think that in discussions that we have with content providers, it's quite evident that they prefer that transparent, they see the benefits of transparent caching, meaning quality of experience and cost. But at the same time, they want to have the visibility <coughs> about the operation that is going on. And it's preferably to use HTTP redirect than actually doing transparent proxy and hiding the fact that you're doing transparent caching from the ecosystem itself. I think that if this space is going to be significant and successful, it's about cooperation with the rest of the industry. And the rest of the industry in this case is the CDNs and the content owners. I think that every transparent caching deployment eventually should be considered as an extension of a CDN. And eventually there should be a relationship between the transparent caching vendors and the CDNs, allowing them to know what has been delivered in the carrier network and find the economic model or the business model to do some kind of revenue sharing. And this is something that is like being discussed today with all the CDNs, and I think that there is a lot of acceptance to it. And over the next 12 months, I hope to be sitting here saying that we have some deployments actually doing and achieving this business model. I think that without cooperation, the word combat has been used before, is something that is not for the benefit of all and will practically prevent online video <coughs> from getting to the consumers at the best experience that we would like to anticipate. So just to summarize, I think that we are able to evolve the market. And today I'm mostly concerned about the evolution of the market itself much more than the competition <coughs> in a way that will be doing good for network operators, both from cost perspective, quality of experience, and the network agility for the content providers because they will see better experience and reduced cost for the consumers that will eventually get whatever content they want and the quality that they anticipate to get it and for the CDNs. And we are doing our best to provide all these benefits to all of them and I believe that given the latest momentum we are on the right track and I just hope that it will continue. Thank you. I would be happy to take any question if I have any time. I must admit that I haven't measured it, so I'm not sure. I'm good? <coughs> yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, how do you go reliably in line if you're bridging all traffic to you? Mm -hmm. like yeah, it's a good question. I preferred not to touch it on the presentation. Quilt is offering a completely offline solution. We are tapping all the traffic on an optical splitter and just redirecting back to the edge router using the redirect. Any other one? Thank you guys. And girls.